folks, this is Bob with BBD back with geopolitical news. Why? Because the neighborhood is in a flux. Why is it in a flux? Because the United States pullout from Afghanistan has been rapid, fast and furious. And, the, and to match it, the advance of, of the Taliban has taken people's breath away. And everybody in this chatter, everybody is talking to Taliban and India should be talking to Taliban. And here's, just let's see, this is what we're talking about. Afghanistan, right here. What does our neighborhood watch say? It says, what does it say? It says, India's neighborhood isn't for men. Expansionist China is everywhere. And America is withdrawing from Afghanistan. The wider impact of these asides, domestic politics in Nepal, which just witnessed another change in government, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Maldives present different challenges for India. And Pakistan, partly thanks to the Afghan situation, is even more of an uncertainty, an uncertain entity now. The moment of perhaps calls for rewriting some of the old rules of the South Asian game. Truly, right now the news is 200 districts in Afghanistan have fallen to, uh, to, to, to the Taliban including three provincial capitals. Helmand is under attack and that's and, and, and the major general there has warned and uh, the, the population civilian population to vacate. Okay, maybe they're planning a counteroffensive. However, there is a small amount of success in Herat. Herat, a combination of the Afghan special forces and the uh, and the Mujahid or the or the militias have beaten them back. And why is Herat, Herat important? Herat is important because it's in the West. It's in the West, so you can see the influence of Iran and the and the Shia Muslims. This is India's earliest northern alliance. So Herat is, is it should bring a smile smile to everybody's face. Now, the other important part of us talking to Taliban, when they say everybody else is talking to Taliban, it essentially only means the United States. Taliban has really no choice but to talk to the U.S. Why does it have no choice but to talk to the U.S.? Is because because of the. If they don't have the U.S. on the side, as Bilkin said in India, they will be a, essentially be declared a pariah state. If they are declared a pariah state, there is no development funds for the Taliban. Pakistan has no money. Then Taliban knows it's going to have to rely on China. China gives everything with strings attached. They will rape and plunder the country, just like they've done in Sri Lanka by taking away the port. China is not your best alternative. Now then. China is talking to them. Then they got this Hindi Patrakar telling us oh, how it, which, uh, Taliban has been given a global state by China. In fact, if you tie up with China at this point in time, all you're going to get is Cubans and the Venezuelans. Do they matter in world, world politics? No. Russia? Sure. Russia is talking to them, but Russia, I think, is overplayed at saying. Uh, essentially, when you look at all this, you come to a conclusion that there is a situation where Taliban can essentially only talk to, get this, people who are on the right side of Pakistan because Pakistan essentially is funding and training the Taliban and providing them with this necessary impetus for takeover of Afghanistan. Now China is another story. China has gone directly and, uh, and uh, bought the Taliban onto the table. Why has it not used its iron brother? Does anybody know? Maybe Pakistan should be worried here. Maybe China, after the bombing that killed nine, the nine civilians in in in, uh, uh, in Gilgit, Baluchistan, maybe China is also thinking that uh, uh, Taliban is not really in the control of uh, under the control of Pakistan. How about that? And also, let me just say this: or in the chatter, generally when people talk about China having an advantage over the other three nations that were booted out of Afghanistan is that they have Pakistan on the side. True. But this is a Hydra-headed monster, which will eventually turn against Pakistan. And Pakistan understands this. It can only, to a limited extent, help the Chinese. But once the Chinese start plundering, like they're plundering Balochistan, they are not going to be able to do the same with the Taliban. Okay, so here is an interesting note by Abhinash Paliban, who says engaging Taliban is necessary. Okay, he said that. But he turns it around. India's support for Kabul and consolidation of relations with power brokers such as Marshal Dostum, Muhammad Muhak, Ustad Atta, Ahmed Masood, Ismail Khan, Abdul Rasul Sayaf, Hamid Karzai, and others reduces the risk of dislocating its relationship with existing allies. Okay. Then he says, other unaccounted for and prone to manipulation, covert contacts don't build enduring alliances, and that's true. And then he says, the problem finally comes around and says, 
The problem is in Delhi, it's the Talib. He says, unlike talking to Beijing, Moscow, Tehran, London and Washington DC, none of whom Islamabad, the Taliban's principal patron, has an enduring rivalry with. The Taliban's international ambitions hit a roadblock when it comes to New Delhi. He says, to be seen in public with the Indian leadership will cost the Taliban heavily. Islamabad will either reduce financial and armed support or more likely target those Taliban figures that it believes have a proclivity to engage with India. Such signaling was clear when Pakistan's national security advisor, Mohid Yusuf, sought India to be ashamed for talking to, talking to Taliban. He says, if the propaganda space offers an indication, there are signs of strain in the quiet India-Taliban space. He said, one, the brutal killing of Indian photojournalist Danish Siddiqui in the spin Boldak has shaken the contract. Okay. Two, the Taliban recently blamed Kabul for uh, uh, perpetrating war crimes in Lashkar Gah by bombing hospitals using Indian supplied aircraft, given the Taliban's demand for impartiality by India. Okay. Three, the Taliban is promising to not allow the Islamic State and Al Qaeda to target other countries from Afghan soil, but it remains muted on its relationship with the Lakshari Taiba and Jaish e Mohammed. So, folks, at the end of the day, as I go back and talk about some other articles that have been written, us not talking to Taliban is not because we don't probably want to, but it's getting crystal clear, it's because they can't. They can't because their, their strings are tied by their purse strings are in the hands of Pakistan and their official sanctions. More after the break. I reported, this is where it says, Taliban Afghan forces battle for Herat, other key provinces that was yesterday and today. Herat celebrates Taliban retreat. So the reason that's what's happening is because Afghan militias are filling the gap and Mujahid, Mujahideen veterans are taking up arms. And this is about China. Taliban says China is a friend, vow not to host Uyghur militants and that is not going to end up being true. And then says, and what does China say? China blames US for Afghan crisis. The reason why China is blaming US for Afghan crisis, folks, if the reports are true, if, uh, 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 the US is pulling out of Afghanistan, the US is pulling out of, out of uh, Iraq, Imagine the kind of resources that are getting freed up for the United States. And guess what they are pointing at? At China. And the trillion dollar spend that's happening, the economy is the fastest growing economy today in the world. And hey, without the American economy, China economy is toast. Better believe it. Then Taliban taking over Afghanistan will make it a barrier state, warns US Secretary of State. This is what I said. And he says, Afghanistan will be a barrier state if Taliban takes control by force, says Bilkin. That's the important part here. Bilkin announces 25. This is the important part, right? And this is where I think the message has been sent that there is a change in policy and the United States is now more on board with, with India. Afghan minister calls Jay Shankar over emergency UNSC state uh, uh, a session. This is important to note at this point of time because India has taken the seat. And it is time for India to bring this up along with the United States and France into the UNSC, right? Then, Taliban will not negotiate unless it suffers battlefield losses. And I think Ghani is right. It says, backing, and look at this, backing India's position, former Canadian Minister Chris Alexander recently claimed that Pakistan is backing the Taliban and is complicit in the proxy war. So what do we have here? What does Avinash Mohani write? Like? Power sharing pack chances recede amid, amid Taliban gains. He says, Pakistan has been a part of the problem that Afghanistan now faces and it can neither escape that responsibility for its past misdeeds nor the future consequences emanating from the same. The stake now is Pakistan's economy and internal security situation. That means that Pakistan needs the Western world to sustain its economy, not China. That explains the the predicament it, uh, in which Pakistan finds itself, it can't go solo with the Taliban like, like last time. It would first need endorsements from the, both the benefactors, the US and China. That doesn't seem to be happening for now. He says, rather than rushing to make a 40 bargain with the Taliban for narrow economic and strategic interests, the world should support formation of a democratic gov government elected through a free and fair process. And it's coming to that, right? And these were, this was the natter leading up to. U.S. boards Afghanistan amid shame, remorse, and concern about return to return to civil war. 
no imminent threat of collapse of Afghan government. Kabul could fall to Taliban before end of year. Western analysts, Taliban capture key town in Kandahar, Pakistan, seen its border. China to Taliban, make a clean break from all terrorist forces. And suddenly it's turned around, right? It's suddenly not hosting them in China. Rockets hit Kabul while Ghani holds a prayer. Afghan army chief postpones India visit over Taliban offensive. Welcome India's commitment to peace in Afghanistan, says US official. And I think the policy now is more aligned with that of India. Thank God for that. To reach a peace deal, Taliban say Afghan president must go. This has always been the problem, right? Russia gives India its first invite for Troika plus meet in Afghanistan, then it pulled the rug again. Russia can't be trusted. U.S. Afghanistan Park in Uzbekistan to form new quad grouping. This I read somewhere. But it's kind of interesting. U.S. Afghanistan, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, maybe a space for Pakistan. Erdogan calls for Taliban to end their Afghan occupation. Now, Turkey is important because they provide security folks to the Kabul airport. They hold the aces there. Cheers. More later. The battlefield has been really, really rapidly changing on a daily basis. So what led up to that, right? India's message to Taliban, stick to Moscow, Doha, Istanbul, plan. The finally India had gotten its act together, right? Then I would have said, Northern Alliance plans to regroup. Resistance leaders seek arms to fight Taliban in Northern Afghanistan. Taliban surrounds Ghazni, uses civilian houses as hideout. This is the important play for India. Chair Shankar meets Afghan counterpart. Looking forward to meeting of SCO contact group in Afghanistan, says EA. Says Jay Shankar meets Afghan counterpart. Ghani, Jay Shankar discuss Pakistan support to Taliban terror heavens. Government Taliban agree on ceasefire in Badgis. And India differs with UK on backing Taliban. That's the important part. Remember the UK also has a 40s situation in Afghanistan. Because it's running the narrative, as I'll read it out to you later, based on, on pre-independence. But unfortunately, because they control the geography, not only of India, as I've said, but also Afghanistan. This is the important part, and they are the ones who've been providing advice to the United States about all of us, and hence, you know, everything is going wrong, right? But the three, they continue to see Afghanistan through Pakistan's eyes, and also they continue to see India through Pakistan's eyes. Afghanistan's neighbors vary as U.S. seeks staging area. This is Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, but a full... Uh, Charm offensive is on. Let's hope India also puts on it, puts his shoulder behind it. Russia, India, a big player in Afghanistan, must decide extent of rule. Oh, that's really funny. You can, every time you say that, it's just to you know la to butter India up and think. Oh, it only words. India invited to SCO meet on Afghanistan. Situation dire. India must tell Taliban join mainstream support only. Then says Afghan envoy, which is true. Amid Taliban surge, EAM to now meet Tajik Uzbek leaders, which he did. I think they were fairly successful meetings. Afghan government prepares to repel Taliban surge, which has happened in Herat, and I hope it happens in Helmand Force. If the Afghan forces get the better of the Taliban in Helmand, and I think air, air support must come in from the United States here. Their tide may turn. He says India pulls its staff out of Kandahar for now. Taliban says it controls over 85% of Afghanistan, reassures Russia. I'm not sure what that means because no reassure. The Chechens are not going to live, listen to the Taliban, Talibs, at the end of the day. Russia, Sergei Lavrov should grow up. Right? India seeks Russia's help for sovereign Afghanistan. And I think if Sergei Lavrov stops thinking on this basis of I just want to be macho, macho, macho against the United States, he might get a better deal. Right? Otherwise, he's going to get told, have be held holding China's can while they're shitting. Afghanistan seek Pakistan help to persuade Taliban for talks. India can help boost up air power Afghan envoy. I think that's a thought that must be given. As Taliban sweep across Afghanistan, India raises legitimacy aspect with Russia. And after this, with Bilkin coming on board with the India and saying that if, if Taliban takes Kabul by force, it will be declared a paria state. Russia better listen, get its ears open. Russia doesn't have the money either, nor the will. Basis of Delhi, Moscow, Tehran ties of 90s still valid, says Jay Shankar. She is right. Taliban intensifies attack as US withdrawal nears completion. And I think they may have they may have started. I think the latest news that I have is that the, 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 the it has slowed down, right? The the uh, the withdrawal. Taliban force Afghan troops to flee to Tajikistan. Thousand plus security personnel cross border militant groups take over six districts in the north. This has got to be where the Northern Alliance, with the help of countries like India, should 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 start the pushback. EAM may visit Moscow this week amid Afghan situation, which he did, folks. 
Afghan is, Afghanistan is in play and India, whether you, whether we think about it or not, I mean, whether we like to believe it or not, I think, not like to believe it or not, I think we are a play. I don't think, like somebody said, when Taliban looks for international acceptance, if it does not get it from India, it's not going to get it from the United States. It is toast. And China and Russia really doesn't matter. Jai Hind.